In this practice problem, we're going to apply the Nernst equation to predict whether a given redox reaction under given conditions, concentrations, is spontaneous or not. And the redox reaction is the oxidation of cobalt metal by iron 2 to form cobalt 2 plus and iron metal. Now, something that's going to be useful for this later is for us to determine the number of electrons transferred per reaction event for this redox reaction, or the number of moles of electrons transferred in a mole of reactions. And here we can see that cobalt is going from cobalt 0 to cobalt 2, for example, and so it's losing two electrons, and the iron is gaining two electrons. So two electrons are transferred in each reaction event for this redox reaction. We're going to use that later, and it's a value we've already incorporated into the Nernst equation, and so we'll see where that, where that pops up shortly. And the big question here is, to think about a hypothetical galvanic cell under these circumstances with Fe2 plus concentration equal to 1.94 molar and CO2 plus concentration in the other half cell equal to 0.15 molar with those metals, cobalt and iron in their respective half cells, and ask whether the cell potential under these conditions would be positive or negative. If the cell potential is positive, then we're looking at a spontaneous redox reaction. Right? We could design a galvanic cell around these conditions and it would discharge according to this redox reaction as written, the oxidation of cobalt and the reduction of iron too. If this turns out negative, then the redox reaction as written is non-spontaneous and if we set up a galvanic cell under these conditions, in fact, the reverse reaction would take place. Cobalt 2 plus would be reduced to cobalt zero and iron metal would be oxidized to iron two plus. So let's dig in and see what happens. The first step, if we're going to apply the Nernst equation, is to figure out the standard cell potential. And we've already done this using the standard reduction potentials in the anode and cathode. And we're going to need the value of the reaction quotient based on these given concentrations, Fe2 plus molarity and CO2 plus molarity. So the standard cell potential is the reduction potential for the reduction process, here that's iron 2 plus being reduced to iron 0, minus the reduction potential at the hypothetical anode or for the oxidation process, which is the oxidation of cobalt metal to cobalt 2 plus. And we can look these up in a table of standard reduction potentials, and when we do that, we arrive at a standard cell potential of negative 0.17 volts. Now, just to pause here a moment, the reason this came out negative is we're considering a hypothetical galvanic cell where we are forcing the redox reaction to proceed as written from left to right. The negative cell potential means under standard conditions, in fact, this reaction would run backwards. Iron metal would reduce cobalt 2 plus to produce cobalt metal and Fe2 plus. This may or may not be the case under non-standard conditions like we're given in the problem. And so we also need to consider Q and plug into the Nernst equation and see whether the non-standard cell potential goes positive. There's still a possibility of this happening if the value of Q is right. And so we need to determine Q. So how do we do that? Well, just like we did back in the fundamental equilibrium concepts unit, we're going to think of Q as the concentrations of products divided by the concentrations of reactants using exponents where we see stoichiometric coefficients that are not one, for example. And here, the form of Q comes out to cobalt 2 plus molarity in the numerator, it's a product, and iron 2 plus molarity in the denominator, it's a reactant. And when we plug in the given values here, we end up with a Q value of 0 0.077. At this point now, we've got everything we need to plug into the Nernst equation. We'll assume 298 Kelvin. The problem really should have specified that, but we can assume 298 Kelvin and use that sort of shortcut version of the Nernst equation where we take the standard cell potential and subtract 0.0592 volts divided by N times the base 10 logarithm of 0 0.077. And before I show that number, I just want to highlight this two in the denominator. This is the value of N, the number of moles of electrons transferred in a mole of reaction events for the redox reaction as written. And this is why we needed to determine back at the beginning of the problem that two electrons were transferred in this redox reaction. Going all the way back to balancing redox reactions, this number of electrons is the number of electrons that shows up when you scale the half reactions to make the numbers of electrons transferred equal. That number to which 
both half reactions are, are equal, if that makes sense, is the number of electrons transferred. And here it's two, two electrons transferred. That's why a two shows up here. And this comes out to negative 0.014 volts. So notice that the value of Q, which was quite a bit less than one, has pushed the, st the cell potential less negative, has made the, the redox reaction a little bit more spontaneous, you might say, or less non-spontaneous. But the cell potential is still negative. And so this redox reaction under these conditions is still on the non-spontaneous side, if you like. Q is still greater than K is a way to think about this in the language of chemical equilibrium, meaning this reaction will run backwards spontaneously, not forwards. The forward reaction is non-spontaneous as written. This is because the free energy change is, is positive, is one way to think about that, and in the language and concepts of electrochemistry, the cell potential, the non-standard cell potential, is negative.